Hi guys, it's Alex here and uh, welcome to another video in our uh, ongoing visualization series. Uh, this and the next video are going to um, show, uh, rather than full games where we have to follow them along, we're going to take uh, puzzles and we're going to see how visualization as well as pattern recognition uh, can help us in solving uh, particular puzzles. So let's take a look at the position that we have here from the white side. White actually has a move here that wins. Um, if you wish, you can stop, you can pause the video and try and treat it as a tactical exercise and uh, see if you can solve it and figure out all of the variations. Okay, so hopefully you guys had a chance to try and solve it. I'm going to um, tell you what the winning uh, move is here. The winning move is knight g6 check. So, how do we find this move as chess players? Well, the move itself doesn't really require much visualization. If anything, I think it requires some pattern recognition. For example, you might recognize that with all of these pawns here, the black king may be vulnerable to back rank attacks. It also can require uh, some knowledge of um, points that are unstable, or loose, such as this rook here on d6, we can see that it's attacked twice and it's defended twice. So white might combine his knowledge of back rank motifs or ideas with an awareness that when pieces are defended, not, um, you know, they're not overprotected or anything like this, they're maybe attacked a couple of times and defended only the same number of times, or sometimes a piece may not be defended at all. In those situations, these little features of the position can be exploited. So perhaps the white player recognized that this is a little bit loose, that the pawn on f7 is undefended, that the king is a bit fragile. And once he recognized all of this, he tried to find some tactical ideas and he spotted the most active move in the position. As chess players, we know that in order to solve puzzles, we usually look for the most active moves and here, knight g6, it's a check. It's the most active move in the position. But let's imagine that you now have thought of this move, knight g6. You still need to figure out, even if you hadn't thought of the move, and I tell you that it's the best move, now you need to figure out why. So black has several options after knight g6. He can take uh, the knight with the h-pawn, he can take the knight with the f-pawn, and he can also take the knight with the rook. So visualization now really helps to try and figure out what's going on along all of those paths. The first one that I think we can uh, solve most easily is after knight g6, that's one ply, rook takes g6, a second ply, rook takes d8, is check, queen f8 is the only way to block, and rook takes queen. This is only really three ply because queen f8 we don't need to worry too much about such a move, but at most it's four ply and it's an easy uh, puzzle to solve. Now we also need to figure out what happens if both uh, knight captures and of course actually what happens if the black king goes to g8. Well, let's, before we move on to the more challenging pawn captures, let's consider the move king to g8. Can you see what would happen there? Feel free to pause if you would like. So the solution once again depends on the back rank. I will tell you the solution without moving the pieces. Knight g6 check, king g8, rook takes d6, queen takes d6, queen takes d6, rook takes d6, and rook e8 is checkmate. This is a little bit more difficult because it requires knight g6 check, one ply. King g8, 2 ply. Rook takes d6, 3 ply. Queen takes d6, 4 ply. Queen takes d6, 5 ply. Rook takes d6, 6 ply. And finally, rook e8, checkmate on the seventh uh, half move or the seventh ply, white checkmates his opponent. So now we have to figure out what happens if h takes g6 or f takes g6. 
After knight g6 check, f takes g6 is relatively straightforward because the back rank issues remain and white can go queen takes d6, rook takes d6, and then rook e8 check. That one is quite straightforward. One ply, knight g6 check, f takes g6 is the second ply, queen takes d6 third ply, rook takes d6 fourth ply, and rook e8 checkmate is the fifth ply. If black were to first capture with the queen, then we would add two plies, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, and then rook e8. Finally, however, we see that h takes g6 is a little bit more difficult, because after h takes g6, white needs to find the move queen h4 check, he looks for active moves, queen h4 check, king g8, and now if king g8, he must find the move queen takes d8 check. Rook takes d8, rook takes d8 check, king h7, and rook h3 check. This, he must recognize, is a winning position. Let us uh, put that one on the board because this one, I think, is the most challenging we've seen so far. So he must see one ply, two ply, three ply, four ply, five ply, six ply, seven ply, eight ply, nine ply, and recognize perhaps that Black's only move is the 10th ply move, queen h5. And now after the capture, we're on ply number 11, number 12. And finally, perhaps recognize that this bishop is hanging. So on the 13th ply, white is a rook to the good. So it requires seeing a lot of moves ahead. And what makes this mainline variation more difficult still is that white has a second choice. He doesn't have to play king g8. So let's set up the position once again. So uh, what makes this uh, especially difficult is that although we've just seen how if the king goes to g8, white has a win with queen takes d8, we still need to figure out what happens if black plays queen to h5. Uh, well, after queen h5, we can show the variation is queen takes d8 check, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, king to h7, and here two moves win. I don't know if you can find uh, these moves, but the moves are either rook h3, or the strongest move is rook e to e8. Can you picture that position and see what the white threat is? So I will say the moves again. Queen to h5. Queen takes d8. Rook takes d8. Rook takes d8. King to h7. Rook e to e8. Let's put the position on the board. One ply. Two ply. 3-ply, 4-ply, 5-ply, and here we said that the move rook to h3 on the 6th ply is good enough to win the game because white gets back his queen and will be left with a rook against, against the bishop. However, even better is the move rook e to e8. The threat by now should be clear, it's the threat of checkmate on h8. Black cannot do anything about it. The white player must have seen this six ply ahead, but also must see at least one more move ahead to consider a possibility like queen d1, check, and realize that this is controlled for, or the move g5, trying to escape with the king, and realize that black does not escape in time. 
So at least six ply and preferably seven uh, ply is necessary here for white. And in addition, he also had to solve the puzzle of what would happen if instead of blocking with the queen, with queen h5, black had played king to g8. And that was a similar length. So this sometimes happens. It's not just uh, how many ply one variation goes, but sometimes there are five or six variations and you need to figure out all of them. They may be relatively short variations, but there are, um, there are quite a few of them to work through. So that's kind of like the branches in a tree. Some variations will be more linear than others. Here, uh, black can simply resign because his best move is probably a move like king h6, but white will go rook check, king g5, will take the queen on h5, and the reason why this is much cleaner than the alternative of rook h3 is that here white collects the bishop on a8 as well, and now it's uh, a resignable position for black. So that's it as far as this relatively challenging uh, video goes. It was a tough puzzle, uh, so don't worry if you didn't uh, solve it. I think important is to realize how everything sort of ties in together, how white used pattern recognition and chess understanding, some calculation skills like playing the most active move. And then at the end of it all, when he had to solve all of these different variations and pictured it all in his mind, he relied on, um, he relied on his visualization abilities uh, in some variations as much as six or seven ply deep. So hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.